reason I start at 1210 is I know I will be proved wrong, but normally people arrive just at 1210. And I've already started, and it's just, it's just uncanny how people do the next clock's fast. <laughs> That clock is fast, which helps me a great deal because I always leave for the train going, oh my god, I gotta move so fast, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I got that. <laughs> so nobody's changed that clock. <laughs> <laughs> or I am in serious trouble. <laughs> well oiled system getting to the train. This lady has made it very well oiled, so now I can do it about three minutes from here to <laughs> here to the train station. So, uh, sorry, I've, uh, so what, one of the things, just to be clear, I did put it in the abstract, this is not about how to make plots, it's about to think about what plots to make. To a large extent, um, it's a big theme of this is what plots not to make. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I, it's, a, it's a battle I wage, and, and I think I'm progressively losing. Uh, worse and worse, everyone seems to love to make plots you know, um, in a particular way, and it's getting more and more common that I think um, that they're, they're, the, the, more, the popular plots are actually terrible. And so what I want to actually um, do today, and I, unfortunately I spent a long time reading up on this sort of stuff, and then I threw slides together, so it's kind of a little bit... <laughs> so literally I put slides into the slide deck, but they weren't in any order. <laughs> so oh, I, should use this. I should talk about this, I should use this. So it's a little, it's a little rough, but the, the critical thing is um, that I want to know, how many of you have ever taken a class in visualization, okay, in data visualization? So what are the guiding principles that you should even consider? As, and for the most part, I don't think anyone does. You know, I'm, there's a lot of people who do whose, whose job it is, for those the design people and, and the, the, the specialized visualization people do, do understand this stuff. But for the most part, we, we use data visualization all the time, and yet we don't seem to actually have any guiding principles. And as a result, we just use the software to do what, what it does, and we kind of accept it like that. Um, and later on, as I mentioned, it's basically, we just leave the software to do what it does. We accept the defaults, and they're not necessarily a good thing. The, the age-old uh, uh, phrase, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words, or 10,000, depending on exactly what it is, where you actually look at the quote. Um, you know, if you think about it, I always just say, okay, just think about actually what a, a thousand words is. Does anyone know roughly how many pages a thousand words is? Four, about four, about four pages. I, I, I looked it up. Google tells me it's four pages. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, depending on fonts and space. You know, if you think about writing even just one page, but four pages, if you think about writing that, that is a serious amount of editing. And it, or it should be. I mean, if you, if you actually put it in, and yet we just draw a plot and off we go. Okay, which is kind of nuts. Okay, so there's, there's, I've got a whole lot of slides. Some of them, some of this will be really boring. I mean, it's obvious. In fact, actually, all of visualization is obvious, or else it's completely not really beyond what I'm going to be able to describe. Okay, it's either really, really hard because it's heavy duty um, psychophysics. Okay, so, uh, you know how we actually perceive things and the actual, uh, or it's just oh well, that's obvious. And if, and if and if it's obvious, that's good. Okay because it's because it tends to be something you have to remember to actually do so basically there's the there's, same there's, there's, there, there are there's only one slide that i really want you to walk away with okay so this is my question so i, I thought i'd get one or two people who have taken a class in visualization nobody put their hand up just bizarre okay it's a really scary okay but you know but but you've taken classes in all sorts of things uh, okay um so what do I want you to do? What do I want you to do today? I want you basically, I want to make creating a plot harder for you, okay? Everyone wants to make it easier. I want you to stop and go, Duncan's looking over my shoulder, <laughs> okay? You know, and I want, that, that's true for me too. I sort of just make plots and, and, and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not, okay? I'll give you some rules of thumbs, okay? But, uh, some, uh, but a, and a few, one or two principles uh, that I want you to actually always think about. Um, but the key thing is to actually just constantly be editing, trying different plots. You should not just say, oh, I, I, I know how to plot this, let's plot it, off we go, and I'm done. You know, it, it should take time if you're actually trying to put something in. Um, so, so there's a several, that's part of the problem. There's a plethora of books, 
that you can read about this from very different, which there's info, infographics, there's scientific visualization, there's data visualization, there's perception uh, and cognitive theory. Okay, there's all sorts of books. To, this, this one is the one that I actually like pr pretty well. It's, it's called Visualization Analysis and Design. It's actually analyzing visualization and a little bit of design. It's written by a woman called Tamara Munzner up in UBC. Um, she, she did her PhD in um, Stanford with Pat Hanrahan. Uh, she's, she, does, she does a lot of nice stuff in there. There's lots of books. Colin Ware has another book. I, I list, I list a lot of, I'll put up these slides later on, and there's a bunch of uh, references that, that are interesting. It's a fascinating subject. I, so I, say, I started reading more than I had done in the past, and all of a sudden it's like, OK, three weeks of reading, and I have you know, just got way too much information undistilled. Uh, so it is hard, but that's kind of the nature of this. We, it's, plotting is really, really simple, um, and yet it's really, really hard. So you want to just think about it. OK, so um, is, it, is it natural? Colin Ware has this nice discussion about this. The answer is it shouldn't. It, 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 there is a lot of con there are a lot of conventions, and you cannot go away from those conventions, and you should adhere to them. At the same time, a lot of those conventions are very bad. <laughs> okay, there is a whole lot of perceptual uh, perception theory and cognitive uh, cognitive theory that you should be that we should be using, and that and that's what we want to get at just at those principles. Um, that's what you, you 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 want that because that's innate. You actually want to be down at the level where you're actually picking up. Through through the uh, uh, through the brain through the through the eye, you're actually finding uh, things quickly, but you're actually able to perceive and, and separate things out. Um, there is an awful lot of convention. There are a lot of conventions involved, so you do have to. You don't want to flout those conventions, so especially in the scientific literature. You actually have to have some weird ones. I'll show you one or two. But it, it, there is this. Is the, it's a nice discussion about thinking about um, uh, about these different things. Okay, here's the first here's the first principle. And again, there, this is all obvious and also there's a whole lot of, everything I say is wrong. You can easily count, you can easily counteract what I say. You need to have tables because when people make you publish them, okay? And yet you don't need tables to actually to actually convey the data. That's the key thing. Okay, we should actually be using a lot less a lot fewer tables than our in our papers and stuff so forth. We should be presenting them in um, in displays. Okay, we, if you take a look, I see so many um, uh, tables of regression output. It's just like God, just put it in a plot. <laughs> when I first came here, it was in 2004. Somebody somebody came and gave a talk. This is before overhead projectors were completely not the, the norm, and they produced a collection of, of uh, outputs from a regression model. I kid you not, they had they had these overhead project the, the old, the old uh, slide, transparencies. They went through six slides of one table because they couldn't fit it all in one thing. It was like, I have no idea. So I grabbed the data and I said, look, it's a plot. <laughs> and you can do it in one and you get all of the, all the data and it's much, much clearer. There's a huge cognitive overload for people to actually look things up and make comparisons. You can sort the rows appropriately, but of course, if it's, kind of, if it's a two-way table, that's more complicated. Okay. Um, so, you know, tables are very, 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 very good um, when you actually want to look up the values and you need to actually go and get the specific value. Nowadays, with interactive graphics, you can actually sort of mouse over it and get, get the value too if you want. But, you know, I, I saw this yesterday too. The two numbers. Why would I have a table, a separate table? <laughs> and, Okay, not, not in this particular case because I just made these numbers up, but oftentimes it's only one number because if they add up to 100%, so there's really only one number. That can be in text. Okay, you do not need to actually have a separate table, and yet, we, but what I thought yesterday was a nice plot of this, so at least, it's not a t at least it's not a table, but it's a pie chart, which takes up yay big, and instead of, you know, 14 point, 14 point font or 12 point font, this is nuts. Okay, so tables are basically, okay, uh, okay, T tables are are not are basically not that good. Andrew Gelman, some of you may have heard of Andrew Gelman. He's a, uh, a reasonably um, popular statistician. Um, okay, uh, he he had a nice paper about basically sort of you know what the hell are we doing? We tell people to draw plots and then all our papers have got tables in. It's a good idea, basically. Okay, okay. Basically, one of the real problems with tables are, is you are just giving them a table and say figure it out yourself, and they will. And it may not be what you intended them to actually take away. Okay, so therefore you have to actually put it in the text, and and, and that now life it becomes redundant and so forth. So to me, tables can 
you have to have tables, that's great because people make you, but try not to. Uh, try to put them in appendices if you, if, if you actually have, have them. I put these in, these are, well, I say I put these in slightly out of odd order, but uh, so I added these later on just this morning. So I'm saying, look, this is what you actually need to do when you're actually making a plot. This is the checklist. Okay, you better figure out who you're trying to actually address. Okay, if this is, if this is kindergarten kids, it's different. Okay, if this, this is a if this is a journal article, it's different. If this is if this is for your own exploratory data analysis, it's different. Figure out who your audience is. This is the same as writing. This is the same as writing uh, writing a paper or writing any text. You better figure out what, who you're talking to. You better figure out what your message is. Okay, and then you better put it in a caption. Okay, I, there's a nice paper that from the IEEE that sort of says, "Here's ten good things." I'm delighted to see that they insist too that. Uh, uh, captions are not optional, okay? Type, a title is an obligatory in the actual plot or in the uh, or in the figure, and a caption has to go in to actually tell people how to read the plot, what the message is. So once you've identified your message, you write down the caption, okay? And now you, you don't even have to have your plot yet, <laughs> okay? Because you now know what you're trying to say. If you do not know what you're trying to say, you're in trouble. Okay, you're not going to come up with a good plot. Then there's a plethora of plots. There's a nice, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a link at the end of these to actually give a catalog of all the um, different plot types and growing uh, different uh, plots. Think about the, the best type, and now we have to define what we mean by best. And that depends on your audience, okay? And again, go back to tables. If, if the answer is I need people to be able to look up the values, the table's fine, okay? If they, if they actually have to faithfully recover these, I also do like to see a lot of them. Um, I do like the tables where people say, yes, there it is, to 18 decimal places, and I'm sure you'll need them all. <laughs> you know? um, so you know, even then you're trying to edit, you're trying to edit this stuff. And, okay? um, so the next thing I, I suggest you do, I'm going to just give you this one slide that, that to me is just the, what I, what I, the way I think, think about things to eliminate, is these visual, these visual and perception principles. Just go like, let's do this. check off and see if I'm um, Violating any of these, or if I could actually use them to choose which uh, which is better, okay? And then we just seem to just stick with one plot and one plot type, and off we go. Whereas you know you can actually do lots and lots of different things, and then try it and see what happens, including actually handing, showing it to your mom, okay, or to the person sitting next to you and say, "What do you see in this plot?" And they tell you, and they go, "Like, oh, that's not what I see." We do that when we actually write. We say. What's the, what's, the, what's the message here? You know, no, I didn't clearly didn't make make my point. You don't seem to actually try out enough. Proper labels on axes, <sighs> okay? And then this is the this is a big one that I want to get people sh just the, the defaults are generic, and they're probably wrong in many cases. They're extraordinarily convenient. Some people, it's I don't want to actually go off and try to figure out the software. I don't want to read the software get the manual. So we just take the actual um, the, the defaults as given. Where, and, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll tweak a few, but the result, there are a lot of things you can change and you should be thinking about this. This, again, is a known risk task. You're, you're trying to, if you have, if you have 10 variables and a thousand observations, that is a vast amount of information that you should actually have to fight a little bit hard to actually convey the, the important elements. To that. There's a nice phrase, uh, get it right with black and white. Okay, first, don't try to deal with color. This also kind of it re relates to, you know, where are you actually going to display this? If this is on a, in a black and white journal, your colors are gone. Okay, you better actually figure this out. If it's on, if it's on an overhead projector, your colors are very different from the ones you're looking at like on your screen. Okay, so it, it matters how you're actually going to um, how you're going to display it. Color is great, and you should use color effectively. Okay, and there's a lot of caveats behind that, which I'll try to convey some of them that I understand, um, but. It's a good idea to try to use black and white. It's a great idea to actually be able to leverage color very effectively. But the nice thing about this is, if you get it right with black and white, you can actually then add color and enhance certain things. Um, how many? So, how many people are colorblind in this room? On average, I had 100 people in the room. How many people are colorblind? Okay, there's eight percent. Eight percent of people are colorblind. Okay. They're almost all male, okay, and they can't they can't differentiate between red and green as as well as other people, but they can actually see light or luminance, okay. So you, it is funny. You so hey, here's a beautiful plot, and people just see sort of just essentially the same color. 
like this is this is not a good thing. If you're if you're lucky enough to be only addressing females, <laughs> this is great. You can you can you can rule out certain types of colorblindness, and there are different types. But even even I think it's 0.5 percent of females are colorblind in a certain in a particular way. So it's just a real problem. Okay, so you have to think about this, but but try to actually figure out color. Uh, through some principles is really, really good. The best thing in my mind is understand all the issues with colors and then find somebody else who's already picked the colors. Okay? And there are there, there are websites for this where they actually say, here's the right palette to use, okay, for different purposes. Uh, and then some people, Cindy uh, Brewer has actually spent a long time thinking about this and actually running experiments to actually figure this out. Even the aspect ratio is important, okay? This even some, just simple things like this, okay? And then and what, these two things are completely contradictory. Avoid chart junk, okay? Whatever chart <laughs> junk is, but just unnecessary gratuitous rubbish, okay? That doesn't actually help to convey the thing. This is the same sort of thing as adding, you know, gratuitous words and text. And at the same time, don't be afraid to actually put stuff that is appropriate on the plot, okay? Actually go in. Uh, I personally, I, I was just talking to somebody who's, who was doing this, you know, they, people make a plot in R or, or MATLAB or whatever it is, and they go over to Photoshop and start annotating. I don't, I don't encourage that. I, say, I suggest programmatically do this so that when you, when you find that the data change, you don't have to repeat the whole process. But for some reason, I don't know that a lot of people uh, put these annotations on, which can be very, very useful. How many of you know about vectorized graphics? Okay, how many of you use them? Okay, this is this is drop drop me nuts. <laughs> I have I, I I was trying to put it, find examples for this talk, so I pull them down off the web and stuff like that, and they're, they're and they're all raster graphics. Okay, they're all pixelated, which is great when you have lots and lots of points <laughs> because they're much faster. Okay, but then I wanted to make them bigger, and uh, I can't see a thing. Okay, so you know it really is important to actually try to use um, raster graphics because we. Uh, vectorized graphics, should I say, SVG, PDF, PostScript, unless you've actually got some really, really uh, huge amounts. It is funny, I, there's one one page in the book where it's like, what's wrong with this? And it's plotting a million points, and it's just like, you can't get past that page. <laughs> so uh, it's a problem. But um, but these, these, are, these are important things, okay? Now, how many of you know what CDA is? It's written here. <laughs> okay. How many of you have heard of CDA? How many of you have heard of EDA? Okay, so that so Tukey Tukey would coin both of both of these terms, uh, you know. But this this is we're here. We're looking for things. Okay, you can do what you like. This is in the privacy of your own home. However, there's still good things to actually good principles to uh, uh, to use. You, otherwise, you may actually you know confuse yourself. You may actually find spurious results. Okay, or miss certain things. Confirmatory data analysis is, is somewhat similar, but then these presentation graphics, you really do actually have to have to figure out how to get these right. These are the ones that you're sort of that you are, are going to make public to, to certain people. So here is this. Okay, this is the this is one of the principles that people go around. Uh, this guy McKinley did this back in the eight, in the eighties. He laid out some some principles. A visual encoding a plot should express all of and only or, or, and only the information that the that is in the actual data set, subset of data, whatever it is. If you think about that, that that's important, okay? You shouldn't leave things out, but you also should not introduce things that are not there. Okay, I think the most obvious example of this is somehow if you actually have unordered data and through color coding or something like that, you actually induce an ordering so people will misperceive. Okay, so if you start connecting lines as if they are actually a time series or something, that's a problem. Okay, so you actually have, always have to be thinking about these different things. What? Not, not have I actually not not just have I actually presented what's in the data, but actually have I gone too far? Have I actually sort of just put something spurious in? And also, you know, it goes without saying in science at least. I hope. You know, you actually have to show all the data. You can't just say, "I don't like that one." It doesn't really suit my purposes. <laughs> um, so you know, you do actually have to show it all. Um, now, what do we mean by effectiveness? Okay. Okay. This is this is this thing. basically you have two choices. Which one actually conveys more information? Okay. There's, I I hear a lot. I even read something. I have a nice quote from somebody who says, you know, 
you got to jazz up your clots. Nobody will actually, nobody will actually uh, pay attention to you unless you actually make your clots sexy. Play with you. And this is a real now. It's getting harder and harder. So you've got to be, be smart. You've got to make things easy to see. That's not true. Okay. If you if you've got a million observations, that should take somebody some time to actually pour through. Okay. It it shouldn't be. Oh look, it's easy to see. Yes, if you can actually convey it where it is easy to see and faithfully, this is great. But the most important thing is that they actually that actually people um, actually get the right answer. So that when they look at this, they actually get they get to see what's actually there. Okay. That, this is the this is one of the big problems. This is fun, okay? Okay, so what we actually want to do is we want to figure out how do how do people not get confused, okay? Here's some just one something. Here's some really bad ones. I thought we'd just start with some really, really bad ones in my opinion. <laughs> and there's a great website called Viz WTF, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> they, they pop them up, they, they pop up new ones. Some of them are actually not too, too bad. I looked at this one and went, oh my god. <laughs> Can you actually figure out what this is? No. I mean what the actual values are here? I mean, this, uh, this this hatching is just the most bizarre thing. The color is, is what I do like the legend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and it's just it's like, what were people thinking when they actually did this? This is bizarre. I mean, just just you know, but but, but uh, why does not why is this not why is it, does this not work at all in my mind? What's the more what, what's missing? If you get I me, mean, except for actually changing the entire plot. <laughs> okay, but what, is there anything we can do to fix it? Perhaps different colors for each uh, category. Different colors for each category, yeah. Okay, we could put in different colors. We have to choose the colors slightly carefully, okay? But not too, then it's not that actually hard. But even if I didn't put colors in here, what, what, what would be one thing that would actually help fix this? Change the dimensions, like trying to make a three dimensional. Of the two they are actually doing this. But there is a little funky thing where you can just about see a, 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 a slight cha a change in shade to make it look three dimensional, but it doesn't work the, uh, for me. So it all flows together. But if you put in lines here, you'd actually see that. Just okay. And this is the thing: we pick up lines incredibly well. Okay, that's the perceptual principle. Okay, we do lines so darn well. Okay, we and, and we're not. We're, they're very. They're, they're very very slight here. We're not picking it up. There's no division here, so this all bleeds together. In a particular okay? So there's just so many ways you could fix this. <laughs> but uh, what about what about the fact that it's horizontal? Is this is this? Hmm? Okay, would be better. Would it be? It's kind of weird because. That's the way the real number line works, yeah. and yet we spend a lot of time flipping them around, and it's actually not—it's not as easy in some regards. It depends on, on what we're, uh, on what, on exactly what the data is. That's um, that, that's unfortunately a little bit of a problem. It, everything's slightly contextual, but there are still some principles. I mean, this is thing. What about this one? <laughs> What's wrong with this? Don't you hate pie? <laughs> well, this isn't even the beginning of the pie chart story. <laughs> I'll get there. I'll get there. This is. If I told you that there's a couple of parts I don't want to have that. If I can wait, wait to crusade the one. So unfortunately, one of the guys in the history of graphics is a guy called Playfair. Anyone heard of Playfair? William Playfair? Well, he actually created some beautiful, beautiful plot back in the 1800s, but the other thing he did was actually uh, invent the, 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 the pie chart <laughs> and the bar plot, which are two hideous things. <laughs> okay, uh, and so basically, uh, I'm, I'm going to get to the point that neither of those should ever exist. Okay, <laughs> okay. so this this is kind of weird, but this I don't know what all the colors are for. Okay, they're kind of, uh, uh, is there a continuity? Are they, is the color telling us anything? Is the background telling us anything? I mean, these are the actual magnitudes. Do you know what type of the, do you know what type of plot this is? Spider. It's a spider plot or a, ra or a radar plot. Okay. I've never seen one with this background. <laughs> with sort of this thing. And so all the labels are fine, but it's like, oh my god, this is chart junk. <laughs> okay, there's just so much. Junk. And again, it's Denmark. <laughs> it's Denmark up there. It's Denmark here. We have a we have a legend with just one thing in it to, to help you differentiate that from. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> okay, so this is all kind of kind of wacky. Okay, the the groupings the groupings here in colors are actually not you know they're helpful that they're 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 actually differentiating subgroups. Okay, so there is some sort of a hierarchy here. There's different ways of presenting this. This one, I like it. 
Which month had the highest? January. <laughs> okay, which one had the middle? <laughs> In terms of lookup, this is the, you know, if they put the numbers behind the car, it might have been even more effective. <laughs> I, mean, it's, I, mean, I mean, the fact that these are the same color, there's nothing helping you to actually draw attention to the actual numbers. There's so much, so there's also this notion that Tufty, and who, who's heard of Edward Tufty? It's funny, everyone's heard of Tufty. <laughs> okay, so, um, so Tufty introduced, introduced this concept back in the 70s, 80s, uh, of you know, the data to ink ratio. So you just actually count the amount of ink, count the amount of data, and you sort of take that ratio, and it's, you want data to be very high. The rest of it's just superfluous nonsense. Okay, and this is just incredible. There's no ordering to it either, so it's kind of, you know, there's, there's nothing, there's, there's two dimensions, there's counts, and there's, uh, there's the, the time, and yet they're not really being exploited. Okay? Where does it say it's a rate? <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 It, yeah, you, you know, they're focusing on the plots here. They're, they're, you can't expect them to get the text right. <laughs> so, yeah. that's, a lot of, there's, that's a lot of cars they have to cut and paste and change the background, too. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, there's another, there, there, there's some great ones where you just completely foul up the uh, thing. Okay, so is this a good plot or a bad plot? Uh, let me talk specifically about this one. This is a, an example of rasterized graphics that I couldn't scale properly. <laughs> what about this? Is this good or bad? I, I had a great, a great professor Murphy who, was, who used to torment the uh, class that I uh, was TA before, where he would basically say, read this paper. Guess what I think of it. <laughs> I, I either love it or I hate it, but you're going to say the wrong thing. <laughs> Do you like this plot? Why? Why would we fix this plot? Or improve it? Hmm? <laughs> There's a background? Yeah. <laughs> Not only is the background just kind of ludicrous, okay, all the lines are actually drawn out connecting the points you want. The actual visual cues, the guidelines in the grid, are actually being overwritten for the bits we care about. <laughs> you know, the actual, they're, they're going in and explicitly putting them in first. This is kind of nonsense. Again, this, there's a lot of software that just puts grids in on a, a background, assuming people want to look it up carefully, and that's fine. Maybe they do, but in many cases, we're actually, here we're actually just telling people this is exactly what, what we want you to look at, and we're actually hiding that. Okay, so that's, this is, a, this, this is chart junk. This is an infographic, okay, as opposed to a data visualization. This is this is also chart junk, but it's not so egregious, but it is, it is there, okay. It's it's also not clear in this particular case. Do we actually need all the all the labels here? They will go from one to 100, zero to one hundred percent. We can actually sort of dispense with this. We could potentially dispense with a lot of them if uh, if we're look, look, looking through. There are a couple of plots that I was looking at yesterday, which were you don't need a y-axis. It just doesn't actually con con uh, convey anything, so what's the point? Okay, even an axis can be chart junk. Okay, and, you, and again, what are you actually trying to do? You're trying to lower the, you're trying to focus the message, so it's the like, same thing as having a piece of text where you just put in extra words. It's somebody has to actually go through and figure this out. So this is to me a help. Okay, okay, Steve, this has come from a guy called Stevens back in 1975. Okay, this, he's a uh, one of the fathers of psychophysics, okay? And th these are power laws. And they're, they're experimental, so it's clearly they're, they're, not, they're not as clear, as, they're not as perfect as this. But, but what this is, is this is sort of basically what happens when you actually change the intensity of, of saturation or brightness in color or the length or an electric shock, okay? And what do humans actually perceive? So we make a change of one unit, here, and if we do that in length, humans basically figure out that you, you've, increased, you've made an increase on one unit. Okay, or most point, if we double it, they pick up that it's doubled. If you triple it, you, they pick up it's tripled. This is what we want. So when we look at things, we want a linear relationship. We want what is perceived to be the same as what was actually changed. Okay, that's perfect, and that's why we love length. Okay, because humans are really good at, at estimating length. Or more to the point, they're not as bad at estimating length as anything else. Okay, electric shock, just change it by, okay, just double it, 
and it goes up by it goes up exponentially by raising the power of 3.5. Okay, you really think it. So just a slight change and massive perceived change. Okay, area is bad. So we underestimate area. Okay, and that that's a bad thing. Okay, so basically anything that isn't one is a problem. Saturation. In, in colors, okay, that's how pure the color is, okay, as we add more white to it, that we don't, we we actually magnify the change. These are magnifications. This is this is perfect, and everything else is compressing the actual change. So you want to actually think about what this what this means, okay? So brightness. If we change the brightness of a color and try to use it to convey a quantitative value, we're not doing very well. It compresses too badly. If we try to use saturation, it doesn't work very well either because it, mag it magnifies things. And as a result, people will actually compare these two things and walk away with an, an inherent difference. Okay. Obviously, if you gave them a table of numbers, they could figure it out. Okay. But you know, but if, you, if you're going to overload them with a lot of data, that's a problem. What does this mean? Okay. Related to Stevens and uh, and then done through experiments. Okay. This is. These are the cues, these are the channels or the cues that are most effective. Length, okay? Length is the most effective thing. As you saw, it's linear, okay? So you should use length for everything. Area was quite bad, okay? It, 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 we, it actually compressed the, the results. So area is actually very bad, and yet we use a lot of plots that use area, okay? A lot of plots that use area. A pie chart. Well, that's not true. Pie chart is actually encoded in the angle. Okay, it looks like an area, but in fact, it's the angle that's most important there because it's not, it's not the change in the in the overall area. It's the angle because the because we're comparing different uh, different lines within the same with the same radius. Okay, this is not so good. Okay, this is in the middle. Okay, these unaligned links. So these ones where they actually start from the same spot and go up, we're very good at estimating. You know how how big one is relative to the other and so forth. This is not so good. Okay. Okay, um, color intensity, we're not too bad, but it's kind of like area, okay? What, what, do, what do you mean by color intensity? Oh, this is fun. <laughs> oh, color is just horrible. <laughs> okay, we love color. But down here, this is really, really good for, for separating. We're very good at separating. For categorical data, Q is very, very good. It's basically this, this, there's two ways we can differentiate categorical data, by location and by color. Okay, but not just any color. It's actually only the hue. Okay, it's it's not it's not luminance and okay or or saturation. It's just the hue, just actually different colors around the color wheel. And volume suffers worse than, than area, as you kind of like expect, which kind of tells you something. Lines, good. Two dimensions, bad. Three dimensions, bad. Four dimensions, really bad. Okay, uh, okay, but. So more dimensions is bad, and so this, do I actually have it here? This, do not, this is the principle, do not use more dimensions that are in the data itself, okay? So our cars, we had two dimensions, okay? We had time, the month, and we had the counts or the weights, depending on what they were, okay? Okay, you can use two dimensions. If we have just a number, if we have a collection of numbers, that's one dimension. So that kind of rules out you can't use a pie chart and you can't use a bar chart because a bar chart has two dimensions and yet that's what we use a lot. And a pie chart has its area, which is really bad. Okay, at least the bar charts are using aligned lengths. So we, it's perceptually good. Okay, but it's it's not it's not ideal. These these are experiments that were done. This comes from here. Does anyone know who Bostock is? Mike Bostock, okay. Mike Bostock, who was also came out of Stanford, uh, uh, Hanlon's lab, um, but uh, Jeff here, um, is, they did this experiment, which follows up on a former colleague of mine, Bill Cleveland. Who's heard of Bill Cleveland? Okay, not many. Okay, so he's a he's a contemporary of, of Tufty, and actually, so I, really, I, I read a nice blog a couple of days ago about this. Mm -hmm. Bill actually did experiments. Okay, to actually figure out what is perceptually good and bad. Tufty has a lot of opinions, <laughs> <laughs> and they're good, they're, but, they're, but that's the trouble. Graphics is a lot of opinion, and it should be based in some sort of and some sort of uh, data-based principles um, to actually say what works, what doesn't work. These are the measurements that Bill got, and um, these two uh, actually. Uh, um, 
uh, replicated the experiments more recently, more in about 2009. They did it actually through a mechanical Turk. Okay, so I'm, I don't know, I'm not actually sure I, uh, how, how reliable this is. I'm not sure how reliable Bill's were either, <laughs> but that's, that's another matter. And Bill actually has two very nice books uh, on, on graphics. Um, but this is what's actually happened. This is when we're actually mapping. So I said that these are, you know, we have this, we have this plot of which is more effective. This kind of tells you how bad things are. Okay, an actual order of magnitude, or you know, how, how big a difference. This is on the log scale. Okay, so this guy, we, we don't do perfectly well. I said, I said we don't do it. It's just, it's not, it's just better than everything else, as opposed to being really good at estimating life. Okay, this is when the, when they're, um, this is when they are uh, aligned. This is when we're comparing across these different things. We don't do well when we have to laterally move a long way or vertically move and actually make comparisons that are far away. That's pretty obvious, and yet. That means that the implication of that is you should you should change the order in which you plot these things to actually draw comparisons uh, as, as, as about the things you want to draw comparisons. So and we'll look at this as we go on from here, and we're actually using these stacked bar charts, which are totally unaligned. Okay, and we're looking at area as well. We're way off. Okay, so this is maybe maybe we finally find out why people are unconsciously illiterate <laughs> it's because maybe the, the plots are actually just actually you know, that they're um are, are misleading them the the these more recent results actually make it a little less severe okay in some in some regards it had some certain things but some of the areas have moved over a little bit there is there is some experiments that actually say area works well in a particular case uh, i'm still i'm still a little dubious okay but these are this, so this uh, is the one I want you to remember, okay? And basically say, you know, you go for that one as, as much as you can. You choose your method based on the actual perception that you get, uh, that, that gives you the most effective one, and you, start, you try to stay away from the, the least effective ones. This gives you some sense about how misleading they can actually be, okay? What's the, uh, which one, what's the ratio between these two? Um, which one is easier to figure out? You know, we do we do length well, but we don't do it very well when 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 they're when they're sloped and when they have different angles. Here we're actually mixing in the fact that there are different angles, but we're still trying to compute length. There's a problem. You, hopefully, this is, this is very elementary. Like, do this and see how well you uh, how well you can do. The, the concept of running these experiments to figure out how well we do is is, is important. Okay, and you can do it yourself and actually figure out what. Uh, what you know, which one is bigger? Oh, how do you know? Because <laughs> you've seen it before. <laughs> okay, there's a whole lot of optical illusions that many people have seen. The fact is, we do not do very, when they're perpendicular. We do not do well at all. Okay, and if you turn it around, will you actually get a different result? Okay, so th this is this thing. By the way, poor poor choice of colors. <laughs> okay, okay. If nothing else, I can't actually refer to that. We feel the red one. I have to actually specify where it is. Using named colors is actually helpful so people can say, can actually call them out by name as opposed to some RGB triples or something like that. What about this one? You've seen this one too? <laughs> these, are, these are famous optical illusions. They're not, they're parallel lines, okay? And it's, it's clear, if you take this away, it becomes a lot clearer. We fill things in. We actually make we interpolate really, really well when we actually have a curve that overlaps. This a nice example here. You know, if I do something like this, okay. If I have something like this, if I have, if I, if I have a curve that comes down, okay, and goes up and, and around, and I, and I put I fill in a line here. This line could be for this curve, or it could be for the rectangle. Okay, and you will immediately assume it's the right angle. Okay, we just start filling in regular shapes. Okay, so you have to be careful to actually make sure that there's some differentiation between these these different things. But what's the what's the characteristic here? It's different from this one. These are columns. You see, everyone sees columns, and everyone sees everyone sees rows here. I hope. <laughs> Please don't tell me somebody sees it. It's a penguin. <laughs> um, the, uh, why? Why do we see these? These are actually, this is the same plot. What's different about it? 
It's the spacing between the different things. All I'm doing is changing the aspect ratio, literally just changing the aspect ratio of exactly the same plot. But now things become, things that are closer together get actually put, get put together, and we start finding patterns uh, because, as I say, we see lines so well. We're just immediately tuned to lines. This is the way our eyes are actually work, apparently. Okay, we have three cones, and we have three um, cones in our eyes, and one of them picks up black and white, and it picks it up to actually be able to do edge detection. Okay, and that, that hence our lines. Okay, so these, these, these are uh, things. Okay, so that's kind of a little bit of the perceptual, uh, the, the actual sort of principle to say, all, all I want you to do is remember that one plot, which is most effective to least effective, and then try to always use the ones at the top. Yes, sir. I have a question about that one plot. Has anyone done any research about kind of like combining this cube with the multimodal and like the effectiveness of getting saturated in an area together instead of independently? Um, I don't, you know, this, uh, uh, thanks for asking in exactly that way. This is, uh, I've been around, orbiting around this area for a long time. It's not something I spend a lot of time keep, you know, re researching uh, I'm, I'm keeping up. And so I don't know the literature as well as I should. Um, uh, that's, I think, part of the problem. <laughs> a lot of people don't know the literature as well as we all should. Um, I think they have people done a lot of experiments with, with various different things. There is a lot of interaction. And we do see, so um, uh, one of the biggest issues is when you get to using color, it really matters as to what color you use when the area starts getting small because you can't pick up this. The, you, so therefore, in small areas, you need to have really, really saturated colors. Whereas when you have big areas, you actually want to do almost do the opposite so they don't. You know. And then there's also resistance if you actually have big, big areas with a lot of, with, with a large amount of heavily saturated color. You actually get these after images. That, so when you move from one plot to the next, to the next, you actually. Your, per your perceptual system is actually lagging behind and actually it's, it's slowing it down. So there's a whole lot of stuff like that. But you can take all of the combinations and then sort of figure out which one works and if it works and they're, they're hard. Okay. So here is what's this called? What type of plot is this? Word cloud. What's a word cloud? Do we love word clouds or do we not? No. Why do we love why do we love word clouds? They're cute. <laughs> we like them. You know? In the data visualization, I'm looking for cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's really my characteristic. The journal of cute data visualization. <laughs> so what's the problem with this? Just actually going back to, we have some principles now as to why this doesn't work. As well as it might. Area. Area. Is it? Not aligned. They're misaligned. That's a problem. You know, that's, that's a, that is a problem. There, it's area. What's actually being measured here, by the way? What is, the, what is the thing that tells me the frequency? First of all, I assume we're talking about the fact that this isn't just different fonts for fun. This is actually the frequency. There's a number behind each of these is the count, the number of times that word appeared in the corpus that we're dealing with. It's not really a linear chain. Hmm? It's not really a linear chain. It actually is. But it doesn't seem that way when you look at it. It doesn't. Why? But does anyone actually know what's being done? It's changing on two dimensions No, it's not. In some ways, it is. So you're, you're right in some ways. For us, it is. But actually, the measurement that is being the key thing, first of all, is some word clouds will actually do area. The, the, the frequency is based on the area of the of this of the word or phrase. It's not consistent. Hmm? It's not consistent. Well, hopefully, within the same one, it is. <laughs> they're gratuitously changing. Ah, uh, you, you, you get this. You get this. So, in this. Hmm? Um, I guess it. So the actual frequency is encoded in the height in this word cloud, okay? But of course, Python is much bigger than R, okay? In, the, in area, okay? Because the, the, so this is actually taller. This is taller than this. Can you tell that? It's not a line, so you're actually it's harder to actually compare them because it's not, not it's, we're not comparing the lengths of lines, although implicitly we are. We can take that line and we can take this line, and in fact, they look very similar and we can do this. But now they're on a line, so that's not good news either. Okay. Um, and then a lot of people will be, be confused by the area. That's a big problem. Okay. Um, so that, so we're, we're not getting the right, we're not able to quickly compare which is bigger. Okay. In this case, we actually get it wrong, I think. Okay. We have, we're doing an awful lot of work to actually to, to span between them. They're not ordered in any particular way. Okay. So, how, what is a better way to do this? What's the, what's the right way to do it? Pardon? I thought you said bar chart. Now, I was going to throw you out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The pie chart. 
pie chart would be even better, okay? <laughs> Except for there's a lot of words, and now we get down into really small pieces of the pie, and now that's that's the problem. What if you lined up all the words in like a in a box that was the same size, and then just did like saturation? We could do color, okay? We could use color, and now we now we we're going to convey that in a um, in uh, an ordered way. So we go back. So you're basically saying do this, okay? So it's still quite low on the on the on the effectiveness scale. So it's not ideal if we use color, okay? It's, it, we may use, and we may want to pull that out. You're looking you're looking as if you as if you don't believe. Oh me? Oh yeah. no, I was just thinking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thinking hard. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So so we could use color, but this is one of the things I want I actually want you to do. You know, there may be a better answer. You should try lots of different answers, different approaches, and then figure out which one actually works well. Okay. Hello. But I mean, doesn't it kind of depend on like, what you're actually? Well, it doesn't depend on what you're trying to convey. I mean, the word cloud is in. You're not like really trying to distinguish between two. You just want to like make a good point. Know your audience. This goes back to the beginning. Identify your audience. Get the message across. But the point we put. So I, to some extent, I'm talking about science. Right. Okay, where it's not just. I was just reading this thing. It's like no, 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 no. no. Yeah, so, uh, I'll show you a beautiful data set and beautiful plot in a moment. And somebody actually reduced it down to two numbers in a pie chart. Okay, with 98% and 2%. Okay, and they said that's for the managers. <laughs> you know, like nobody's going to look through this stuff and go, oh. Okay. It's, for for scientists, we you know we are supposed to actually care about actually conveying the right answer. But yes, absolutely. This is this is why I'm saying you, you can contradict everything I'm saying today, and I, and I can do it. Uh, but it, but there are again per perceptual things. Um, so this is a this is a dot chart. Okay, this is the answer to almost all questions. Okay. Okay. I mean, get rid of a pie chart. It's gone. Dot chart, okay. You know, um, get rid of a stack bar chart, a dot chart with multiple with multiple different uh, series, if you will. Okay, I'll show you that in a second. But this actually does allow us to very quickly compare. Again, we're using the horizontal axis here because it's on the real number line. It, it also makes the uh, labels work out a lot easier, so that we don't have to turn our head to actually go and read them if they're on their if they're on their side and so forth. So this is actually a very Good, good approach. We are actually using length again, and again, it's aligned length. We're starting at the same point in the origin, and off we go. So that is actually a more effective display. Okay, this. How many, how many of you have heard of Miard? Okay, thanks. So this is this is this is a, this is supposedly the best plot ever. Okay, by uh, as as um, elected by. <laughs> okay, <laughs> which is good. No, he's a, he's very good. Uh, in, there are, this is actually a very good, very good plot. You can improve it, but it's it's really good. This was done back in the 1900s, uh, early 1900s. This is the data set. It's actually not too big. Okay, what we actually have is the cities. Okay, in Russia. Okay, this is the number of soldiers in Napoleon's march to Russia, to Moscow, and back. Okay. And then we also have uh, the temperature, and we also have some other information about certain battles that were actually that were the dates of battles and so forth. How would you display this? It's not easy, by the way. <laughs> Three tables, you got to join them in some way. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. But like, oh, so that's these are the mechanics. But what's a good visualization? Hmm? Depends what we're trying to convey. We're basically trying to convey, actually, the, the, the basically this is a slaughter. Okay. Basically, they, Napoleon took off with. I, I cut and pasted this from a from a subset. I think he took off with 422,000 soldiers and he came back with 10,000. Okay. That's an annihilation. Okay. So you kind of want to convey that, but actually, you don't have to, but you want to see how it evolved. Sorry. Maybe he's a eight-year-old beginning, and then slowly moving down to get close to Moscow on the map, and then maybe blue reading. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And what he did was he went to Moscow, and then he came back. Okay. And so there was a battle in Moscow, and he came back, and so forth. This is what Minard did. Okay. This is a long, long time ago, before Google Maps. <laughs> okay. Which, uh, so you know, and it doesn't actually can it doesn't show you the mountainous terrain or anything like that. It does convey, you know. It's, so that, that could be considered chart junk. It could also be considered very, very important, depending on, on what's going on. But basically, this is this is what this is the size of the army that started off. He's even annotated this again. This is 
uh, rasterized graphics just kills me. <laughs> uh, the, um, so, so he actually annotates. So this is this is this looks like chart junk, and it could, you, some people could consider it chart junk, but it's actually there's no axis here telling you how big the um, or um, how big the unit is for the number of um, number of soldiers. But he's just he's marking it there, so you can actually go and see uh, certain events as well. Okay. You have this is this is the geographical location we're using latitude and longitude. Okay, you have you have um, you have a sense of time. Okay, uh, in, in, to some extent uh, down here. Well, we got here. The this color here is for um, advancing, and this is for retreating. Okay, obviously we turn around. It's, you know, you could almost do away with that. But you see how fast, see how much it's shrinking when it gets down to here. There's all, it's also showing off, showing these little pieces of where the people went off in a different direction. These guys came came back later on um, uh, in, in a different thing. And then this here is a totally separate plot, but totally related. Okay, it lines up correctly with these lines that actually tells you what the temperature was. Okay, and that's a lot of data. Okay, that is an enormous amount of data on a single plot, yet it's actually pretty discernible, I believe. We also have rivers on there, which is kind of what we have a population like really isolated and got all of the rivers across the river. Yeah, and so this is where it would be nice. It's, it's nice to have some geographical background, in it, if you will. It's something nice to see mountains if there's something if there's something there. How do you improve? We just put one big dot chart. <laughs> this is this is some somebody did somebody did CMU did this, which is which is in, um, which is interesting in my mind for two reasons. What they one of the things they did is they want to actually connect the temperature. So because it's, it's reasonably obvious that this is out and back. Okay, you could put you could actually make that implicit by actually putting you know, maybe lines on the edges or something like that to actually, or maybe an arrow, okay, in, to actually get something going. And we can think about that. But what they've actually, what the color here is actually temperature. What do you notice about the temperature? We kind of knew this already, that it was like the temperature was going down, okay, big time, okay, because that, that we actually have the plot in the previous one. Okay, we have, the, we have the plot here that, that for the temperature, and you can read it here if it wasn't rasterized or in French. <laughs> okay, but that, so that's, that's fine. But what about here? It was really hot. It was 95 degrees. Okay, so it, it was actually a heat wave on the way out and, and, a, and really cold because, of, it, because it was in December uh, when they actually got back. So this is like, but so if, again, it's rasterized. It's hard. I'll, I'll forgive you if you can't see it. What's odd about that plot in my mind? Yeah. What's what's something that just jars me? I, I, I literally I saw this in an icon, a little thumbnail, and I said, "That's weird." <laughs> oh, the box is disjoint. The boxes are disjoint. That's yeah. That's fine. I'm just. Oh, the white. <laughs> okay. It's backwards. Yeah. <laughs> it's just weird. <laughs> so the, the large value of 95 degrees is, is uh, below minus 40. It's a very odd thing. This comes out of the visualization group. I don't know why they did that. <laughs> it just just seems odd. Um, so we could say colors with the scale, so it's the negative number on the left side. Um, if I so if I move minus 40 over here. Would that be a good idea? No, what do you, what do you mean? Like just I'm just saying that 95 is bigger than minus 40, so this is backwards. Okay? Right, no, 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 right. So Danielle said, okay, we'll move the minus 40 here and move the 95 here. This will now be entirely correct, but is it a good idea? No. Flip the scale because hot, hot is red, okay? And blue is cold. Is that right? Is that true? Yeah. No. <laughs> That's a cultural convention. <laughs> that is not a perceptual thing. Okay, that is not a cognitive thing that people just know. Okay, it is kind of funny. So you, you, that's one of the things I'm trying to want to get at is some things are learned and some things are cognitive. Okay, are just immediately perce perceived, and you'd like to keep those separate. Yes, I mean to, to a large extent this is true. The red, red is warm, so if we just flip, if we flip the colors, reverse the colors, this would be great. Okay, that that would be fine. Uh, but I would uh, say. One of Colin Ware's books, who basically had this Chinese student in his in his um, in his lab, and she did something about um, 
uh, I forget, forget exactly exact what the example was, but she's using red for um, red and green. And she's so like, well, red means stop or bad, and green means good, and all that sort of stuff. She goes, no, 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 it means different things in Chinese. Okay, and you, it does matter. And again, if you want people to quickly react to this, there's a nice, you know, there's another plot I'll show you later on if we can get, that, get time to it, um, you know, where you're actually using colors that make, make sense to people, okay, you know, where you can choose your color spectrum here. And, you know, there's one, one very nice plot called Where's the Book uh, of, where you, you get it wrong, it looks ridiculous, you get it right, the, um, the, You've got elevation and and below sea level, and what you're actually seeing is that the white is at the very is the is the top, is the highest value, which corresponds to snow. <laughs> okay, then you go down to green, where green is corresponds to or the sea level. Then you get down or, um, and and uh, slightly above, and then you get down into the blues and so forth. And this is a beautifully picked to actually uh, to correspond to the, to the physical uh, aspects. So it is kind of this is this is a nice. Um, uh, I think this this illustrates this idea of we saw, saw a whole lot of chart junk and yet not in Minard's plot. It was actually carefully uh, carefully decided to put this stuff in because it actually helps convey things. There was no need for an axis. These guys use an axis for some reason. Okay, it's not clear that we need to know exactly where the latitude and longitude are. <laughs> okay, we just care about the general impression. By the way, that that is still amazing. But this is by the way, this is the yes, it, it, if you take that value here and then the value here, it's 2%, 2.5%, okay? So that's where the pie chart of 98 gets 2% count comes from. You can condense all of this information into just those two numbers if that's your target audience, <laughs> okay? That's a huge amount of people killed, <laughs> okay? Um, so, um, <laughs> I had a great fun yesterday. <laughs> Irish people like watching. The conservative part of this. <laughs> <laughs> this is, as I was saying to Matt today, it's like we've had all these issues with polling, okay, uh, in, in, in different elections and, and, and referenda in the last year or two, but boy, nothing compared to the decision to actually take a 20 point lead, call a snap election, and lose, <laughs> lose uh, seats. So this is, this is your pie chart. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is this is the pie chart, okay? So this is okay, the, and I actually chose the colors to actually correspond to the colors that are typically assigned to the uh, parties, okay? Because people actually understand this. Many of you may not be quite so familiar with the with the British election system as I am, <laughs> having spent twenty two years in Ireland watching <laughs> watching stuff. Uh, yeah. So so this is area, uh, but it's not really area. It's angles. Which one is? Is this twice as big as this, or three times as big as this? No, I'm not. Is this, what's the ratio between these two? Almost 40, almost 40. Now you, you, just, you just know the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so this was 43 and this was 40. <laughs> okay, but they know it, okay? So, but, but it's, hard, it's hard to tell, and so we're not very good at this. And again, for you, depending on your audience, when you've, got, when you've got an answer of 98 to two, it's perfectly okay to do that because you're basically sort of saying, look, there's a huge difference. You don't care, you just care about there's a huge difference. But if you actually want to be able to look this stuff up, that's great. So you can sort of, one of the things that people can actually do is, well, we just put the numbers right beside each. <laughs> well, that's a table. <laughs> okay, but you, in addition to it, when we actually have the legend over here, there's an awful lot of lookup going on here, unless you're familiar. So there's an awful lot of lateral motion, which is tiring on the eyes. And and, uh, and slows and slows perception down. Okay, this <laughs> is even better though. Okay, <laughs> the exploding 3D pie chart. I didn't bother exploding this. The exploding parts are ridiculous because now you're putting things here. Like I'm going to put that one over there, put this one over here, and now you try to match them up together. Okay, so now you're not even they're not even contiguous, which is a disaster. Okay, uh, if we go back to that um, the, the, the experiment that Bill Cleveland did. The further things are away from each other, the less good we are at actually estimating the effect that we want. So I didn't bother exploding this one. And by the way, I made plots in Excel. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very happy. I, this is, the, I think, the first time. <laughs> the, uh, so um, what's wrong with it? Why is this so much worse than the previous one? The weight difference is really jarring. The, 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 the saturation gradient is really jarring in that one. The saturation. The colors. Like how the blue is really dark in the lower right and lighter for the conservative. So, as I like, as I like to say, take a look at how I'm dressed. I'm not. I'm not so worried about the aesthetics of, of certain things. Um, 
But there's something worse than the actual that it's jarring. What's worse here? Or like a jazz. Uh, first of all, yeah. we've gone from one-dimensional data to well, maybe two because you've got the you've got the categories. Okay, that's fine. But we've got a third dimension in here. But where are, your eye includes this part in this part. So you have grossly overestimated the value here, and you grossly underestimate the value here because you don't see that part. I mean, this is just ludicrous. Okay, to do this, we see a lot of these plots. Okay, when you go work in business, this is the staple. Okay, okay. So this the, the, the this three D pie chart is really really uh, misleading. Okay. This is, okay, I can I can throw it in the piece with that. Here, here's actually what happened. Okay, this is this is what happened. This was before. This is the this is what happened in the last election. This is what happened in this election. Um, nobody can say that my plots aren't current. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, so so you know, can, what, how do you compare these? Okay, I mean, what 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 what's the message here? Okay, um, you know, it's nice to be able to compare. If I had, if I wanted to look at multiple years, I'm losing. I, I, I get no, I get no uh, benefit from actually um, from saving space. Okay, I'm going to have to consume the same amount of space for each plot, which is bad. So the actual layout is important. And for those of you who know, when you when you publish in printed journals, space is absolutely everything. <laughs> okay, so um, this is uh, going to uh, just trying to think. So this this is a um, let's do this one. Okay, this is a um, this is the same thing. This is a this is a bar chart. Okay, so this is better than your pie chart. Okay, we're not. We're, if you go back to my plot of effectiveness, we're no longer using angles. We're using height. Okay, so this is better. We're using area, which is bad. Okay, so we could do better. Danielle, how will we do better? <laughs> height. <laughs> okay, we're going to do better with the dot chart. Okay, because because these. These bars mean up the width of these bars mean absolutely nothing. This is not a histogram, okay? And again, I mean, this is all almost obvious, and yet people just it just you know little you know, the paper clip, the the, the uh, Microsoft paper clip will just produce these plots for you if you're not careful. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, so so you know. By the, by the way, how do we? Uh, by the way, uh, those of you who don't know about the paper clip, it's coming back. Google, Google has a new. Again, back to the cute. <laughs> <laughs> what's the better way? What's a way of what's, if if I was making a dot chart? But let's just stick with this. How would I? How, what's one thing I can do? An, an, an obvious thing I can do to improve this plot. Wait, keeping the bars. Hmm? Keeping the bars. Keep, keeping the bars? Yeah, I'll, I'll just we can keep the bars. Okay, okay. But you want to turn it on its side? Okay, so I thought we're doing that. So, okay, sorry. Okay, okay. I, I, yeah. So I mean, clearly, I want this one over here. I want to actually sort of see them go, going down. This is the example of the. You nice to know the years. And by the way, if you notice, I got the years backwards here, which is also kind of slightly dis disconcert disconcerting. I did this for a reason because Excel is really annoying. <laughs> okay. So you know, but it's, it is disconcerting. We need we need a legend for the years and so forth, and, and that means. But we clearly want to sort these. Um, that makes sense. But actually, I did this in R and in a, in a single command. This is an example of not using the defaults. It alphabetizes them. You have to coerce it to actually say, no, I want you to sort them in a particular way. Okay, so this is uh, this is a, this is one trivial example. Don't use the defaults. Like actually think about what you're trying to convey. Okay, um, this stacked bar chart. Okay, why do we not like this one? Hmm? This is the example. We the second in the second category down, so it's pretty effective, but not as effective. These are not aligned. So okay, so tell me, tell me which for this guy here. Okay, this is actually the proportion of bedrooms in in the county that for houses sold between 2004 and 2006. Should you care? We have the counties here. Okay, so tell me. So this is uh, zero, one, two, oh, sorry, one, two, three, four. So tell me which county actually had twice as many. Um, what twice proportion of houses with, with four bedrooms? It's really hard to actually tell, okay? Because you basically have to sort of start lining these guys up and measuring the height here and then comparing it to the height here. It's just hard, okay? It's doable, totally doable. 
you can kind of get to dig up with my daughter. You can get out of Ruhr. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's uh, you know. But then we go back to tables. Uh, you know, where we actually are trying to look this stuff up. Okay. So this is a dot plot again. We could sort this, and we should sort this. Okay. This is a dot plot. But notice the way that this grows. If we wanted to show all the elections, we could just let them layer them in. Okay. And yeah. I would also say that in Polish, we use reddish and bluish colors for those implied to English audience, Democrat and Republican, and we're actually not doing that, right? We, uh, we are not. These are these are for the year, so we need a legend here. Exactly. So we should. There are contextual um, cues here. Uh, the English think the, the world revolves around them, so they wouldn't necessarily have this problem. <laughs> Thank well, you. Is there anyone? Are there any British people in the room? <laughs> so yeah, we, we should choose our color. We should choose our colors a lot better. These do not stand out very well. They stand out reasonably well on, on a screen. Uh, they don't work. So this is where you go back. Yep. So I, I know now that stacks like, like cluster and bar charts are bad. I've known that for a while. Like, so you're saying dots really always? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that uh, for, uh, uh, yes, basically. As, as an alternative to group bar charts, you're usually better off with dots. I, 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 the first go-to to start iterating. I, I believe so. Yeah, and but there's one of the one of the troubles if I only just zap through this really much. Um, uh, I'll show you an example. This because this is unfortunately my machine is uh, that this is an example of why it took so long to plot. <laughs> uh, uh, I think. Um, Pretty certain I have one here that I want to just. <laughs> this a lot of information. On, we're going until five. <laughs> yeah. um, the, uh, what's, what do you notice about this? This is actually this is built. This is a system. That many of you have seen this in R. That the GPL has it. This is this is um, uh, this is a. a, a these are panel plots. Okay, that you divide, you subgroup. Okay, you subset and group by. What do you notice here? So this is, if we put all of these on the same single dot chart, it might be a little overwhelming, so we break them down. But what, this is an example of where the dot charts actually reveal something that nobody had seen before. So Bill claims, Bill, Bill likes to claim one thing, but, but it's, what, what do you notice? Hmm? It was that way. Oh, it goes that way? No. Yeah, there's all sorts of interesting things here. This is an experiment from the 30s, okay? So that, okay. More. They are backwards, and there was an error in the data entry, and it, and it persisted for about 60 years. Okay, <laughs> nobody noticed because you plot things and just you stack the stack bar charts, and nobody can tell. Also, these are actually, if you take a look, this is the these are all these are all, this is the only station where it's wrong. Okay, or that, that is totally different, and you actually can pull that out a little bit with a dot chart. Okay, there's a little less junk going on here. You may see you may see it in nine other plots, but it's uh, it's. Um, <laughs> um, so again, a lot of the stuff is obvious. I, I, what I really want you to think about is the why. Though. I mean, because so the one thing I would like you to be able to do is say to critique other plots, but also when you make a plot, go like, how can I improve this? There are some principles. Just take that, take that plot of what's more effective and less effective, and actually say, let me try to figure this out. It is extraordinarily complicated. Okay, because we try to fit way too much onto plots. And for good reason, and we always will. <laughs> okay, but uh, this is stacked. This is the same thing of, of aligned, of, of unaligned data. So we're actually making comparisons uh, is hard. Although this one is not so hard. It's kind of you pick up the big features. This one, you know, it's getting a little more difficult to actually figure out. And we're not very good. This, this is a problem when you have these sort of things. We're supposed to be looking at this difference, and yet what humans do is they look at this difference. They get parallel lines, and they look at the difference between parallel lines, and then they actually mis uh, they misunderestimate as our previous person president would say. Um, so this is and this, this goes. People love histograms. histograms. Okay, um, as you may have guessed, why? But you, hmm? They're supposed to be area. That's okay. <laughs> That's the one time we're allowed to have area because they are actually supposed to represent area. Of course, we never actually change the bin width. We all because because all our software just keeps a constant bin width, so we're never exploiting that. Now, the um, the reason I the reason I hate them is because this is I kid you not. This is where a ruler, a piece of paper, and a pencil is what people use to use to to create these things. Okay, um, we have. 
in modern computers, we don't actually use. What we're actually trying to do in almost all cases, I would argue, is trying to actually approximate a density. Okay, not a not a normal or an exponential, but actually just the, the smooth tensor. So just smooth it. <laughs> just actually, it's the same calculation. And it says you still got a choice of bin width, so you might as well actually use this. But these these are these, this is a throwback to, to the old days, as well as it, it doesn't grow like the pie charts. If I want another histogram, well, I can try to put it on top of this, but now I've got to actually one will block the other. So okay, now I can get into transparency and oh, okay. Whereas if I could just actually draw the curves. The density curves, um, I can have all, a whole bunch of, maybe too many. <laughs> okay, I'm not, and I could choose my colors better, but again, yeah, R just picks those colors for me. I don't care. Yes, I really do care. Okay, I really should be taking control of all the colors. And if, if it's too hard to specify the colors, I should find a better piece of software. Okay, because it's just, you know, it just shouldn't be, oh, it's too hard. Okay, if not, if you're trying to make a plot for other people to look at. Okay. So, so this 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 grows, okay. This grows, uh, and we can. Just, these are other plots I was just looking at. This. Why do we not? Why do we not like these? How many of you have seen these plots? How many of you are obligated to use these plots? <laughs> There's a lot of people. There seems to be a lot of disciplines who just like this. Okay, you, you, I have, it's not a paper one. I have a plot with these bars and these things sticking out of them. And I recent one that I have, that I have never seen before clearly my ignorance, um, where people actually say, this is A, this is B, and this is C. It's actually, yeah, we actually have, no, 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 very easy. Where they're actually conveying, yeah, those actual letters convey which ones are significant and in which order. It's like, wow, that, if that's a convention I've never seen before. <laughs> um, so, um, how do we do better? Well, which one is better? This one or this one, by the way? Again, this is my personal opinion, but I have some reason to back it up, okay, which is important. This is why, unfortunately to me, graphics is all about, oh, I don't like that. Change the font, okay, as opposed to, you know, I can't, here's a good reason. This is black. I cannot see the corresponding point here, and yet I can see it here. I can see the, the, the actual confidence interval, okay, which seems odd to, to, to me. It's a, it's a strange choice of color to actually include this thing. Why have it? Why have it? Uh, why, when we know it's symmetric, you should actually do this. These guys will then actually go below zero. You actually sort of see that things happen. Whereas we're cutting, we're cutting that off for some particular reason. We're not doing the symmetric thing. Um, so uh, this one is the. This is another one from biz.wtf. Uh, it's like, what the heck is this? And this. It's the way they describe it. It's like. A mouse came in and ate the <laughs> Well, I went, I went and read the paper. Okay? This is in sci uh, nature. <laughs> These are the observations. This is raw data. So what the heck the bar is doing there, I do not know. Okay, uh, and 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 these guys here are the, are the observations here. So if they're on, if they oh, if they they're plotted with twice, and if they come out of black, like, but of course this one is just plotted with black because you wouldn't see how many percent. And this is weird. They, somebody actually put effort into this. It's uh, very very bizarre. So if we go back to this one over here, to me. Uh, uh, so the, 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 if you go out to the very first plot, the, this one here. So I just redrew the. I, I just redrew this, and personally, I just I like this. Again, it will grow, and not because I can actually put on uh, another series of experiments here and so forth, and we can actually compare them, and life is good. Again, I'm not filling in the legends and all that sort of stuff. You could do that. that that's less about the uh, actual co concept. For those, I hope all of you have seen what the next. You saw it go by. Okay, this is a scatter plot of I forget how many observations. It's not that many. Okay, but you have absolutely no idea if there's 100 points here or 10,000 points here. So you, it's completely useless. Okay, you get the you get, you get the big picture, uh, and that's fine. But this is a much better plot. Okay, so this here you actually so this is this is actually a density plot essentially, the smooth scatter plot. So it counts. And I like to actually I like to think about it this way. This is, these are actual. This is a hexagonal tiling, so there's no point that's actually not in a tile. Okay, and then you just you count this. It's 
essentially the same as what was going on before. But these smooth scatter plots are way better for large amounts of data. And a lot of stuff happens. How many of you, Joe? What about these guys? Have, you, have they all seen these? Okay, this is a parallel coordinates plot, okay? It's a good idea. You have a plot on a real number line, one dimension. Two dimensions, scatter plot, three dimensions. Okay, we all know about three dimensions, four dimensions. Dang, it just doesn't scale. <laughs> okay, we're told. This is a, I believe, an 11 dimensional plot, okay? Okay, and you can make this, again, yeah, the ordering really matters here to actually see things. The best of all these is actually manually reorder them, or even better, that you cut, you drag you drag the, the axes around and order them so you can actually see things. It gets pretty complicated. There's only 29 observations here. When you get to, I do, I do another one <laughs> with the, all the housing data. Oh, it was just a mess. <laughs> you just, it's all black. You can do this uh, transparency, the yeah, alpha blending, to actually do this as well. But this, these are actually, can be useful. Okay, and they also can be totally not really useful. Okay. What is it? Sorry. Um, the only time I've ever used parallel learning plots is, is really when you use some values and you're trying to show that you sure a bunch of different individuals. But what is the high dimensional example? So this is so this is miles per gallon. So the, yes, the car data set, the go to data set. <laughs> okay, so you know, so this is zero miles or low miles per gallon. We don't put the axes here, okay? And all you're trying to do is show, you know, as one goes up, the other goes up, or as one goes down, the other goes down. You're kind of looking, looking for flat lines, you know, very steep lines in either in either dimension to actually get pick up visual patterns. Yeah. So so you can use it for you can use it for continuous variables, or you can use it for categorical variables like. Um, Gear, gear has the number of well, for it's um, cut off. Man, man, manual, automatic. It's like a straight visualization of numeric data. Exactly. Yeah. That's so. So parallel coordinates are actually kind of nice. They can be useful. Here's a. Has anyone seen this little plot? Yes. Yeah, hmm. Yeah. It's kind of a heat map, but it's kind of it's it's it's, 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 yeah, it's a heat map. Is the are the colors here? But it's you know this is. Most of you, I, I doubt you that many of you have created plots like this, you know, straight straight up. Hmm? They did publish a paper where they didn't follow that our creative plots. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you can talk about heat maps, but it is like here, you just you have to think a little bit about what type of plot should I use. I mean, I could actually just do this is categorical data, and these are counts of measles, and then we have an event here when the vaccine was introduced, and you see it die off. There's, this is a time series, okay? But it's a time series for each, for each, um, each state. What's another way of plotting this? I kind of just told you. I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a count here. Okay, there's an implicit count here. So I mean, we could actually draw this out as a sequence of time series. Okay, and and the, and the states we'd have a series for each state. Okay, and the time goes here. The vertical axis would be the would be the actual counts that correspond to the cells. This would be a perfectly good. It's just way of doing it. The trouble with that is, it's going to become a mess. We got 50 states. Okay, and you're not going to necessarily be able to see the good choice of colors. A whole lot of luck where they naturally separate themselves out would be great, but that, but you can't depend on that. So this is a nice way of just of so just putting them in a line and using another variable to actually give you different things. Okay, do we like this? Now you gotta figure out what I like. <laughs> this is the comment from a, from a couple of days ago about this. This is the actual prediction of, of, about the hmm? so, so, so this is kind of like Meenard's plot a little bit. We have a lot of these little pieces of information, junk, chart junk or actually really, really useful data. We've got two plots, we've got two plots, we've got this one and this one, we're able to see the inflation rate, the unemployment rate, we're able to see who was actually in power, we're able to actually see how, you know, what their majority was or not. This was a hung parliament, hey, we're back there again. <laughs> but, yeah. So, you know, we're actually sort of saying things, how would you fix it? Can't be fixed. <laughs> Uh, you, when you change the colors, which colors? The background, which one? The, 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 the whole background. Oh, the whole background? Yeah, because it's gray. You don't have a lot of contrast. Do I have a lot of contrast? You know, I, I didn't actually include this in, I don't have a, I've got to put a problem. Depending on where the contrast is, you actually may get less information. 
okay, you may actually, you can be very, picking these guys here is very, very important because you can have some very nice plants where you basically have exactly the same color and you just put different colors behind them and you pick up totally different amounts. Okay, this is called a contrast effect. It's, we have a very non-linear view of things based on the colors around them. And go back, go, going back to this idea, we want a, a, a one unit change to correspond to another one unit change in what we perceive, that, that can be an issue. So there, there's aspects of that. Somebody have their hand up. Are the black ones aligned with the second lower chart indicating terms? These are indicating elections. Yeah, so this is, the, this is basically saying when the prime minister changed or didn't change. Okay, uh, yeah, so then, and this one here is lower because she she continued. She, okay, um, and all that stuff. I mean, um, you know, to me, one of the things I'd like to, two, two things that I want to change, and these are, you know, again, you know, who cares? <laughs> okay, when I looked at this first, I was going, what are these lines? Okay, the, late, the legend is here, and yet these are going the wrong direction. <laughs> okay, like, you know, and little things like that actually, you know, they slow you down a little bit. In addition to which, I don't need this here, I need this down below, and I need to actually sort of connect these things. If you, if you look at the Norris one, they actually drew the connection between the plots. And likewise, Britain, you know, it's almost like this is in the, in the title as opposed to a subtitle. You know, I want to use as much space as possible, but overall, this site, in my opinion, this is actually a very effective plot um, of doing things with. Likewise, we have things like this. We have these, we have these uh, time suits. The colors are actually, I, I like, they're kind of muted colors. Um, what's this called? A ribbon chart. A ribbon chart. And who, who created them then? But another term for the, the ribbon chart is a psyche chart. Okay. Okay. Um, do we like this? What, what, well, it's actually really, really informative because it basically is, it's basically predicting where where the votes are going to go because UKIP basically had a lot of votes for the referendum. This is the United Kingdom Independent Party who wanted to get out of, out of Europe. And they basically go, okay, fine. You know, they, they think the 46% are gone over here, I think, because these don't, do these add up to 100%? I don't know. <laughs> this is a little confusing. There's no, nothing really tells me this. The, the, it's showing where people are going to go, where their support is going to go in different directions. So this is, you know, this is pretty useful. Okay. So how else would you do this? Yeah. So I, I don't know. I kind of like the ones with the New York Times and the New York City where they have like direction of change indicated with the with an arrow, and uh, the length of the arrow can indicate time to the change. And yeah, kind of it kind of does the same thing, but it's on an actual map. Okay, on a map, on a map, but this isn't a map. In a sense. Yeah, I, mean, so, I don't know. So that, then you have contextual information that we love lines. These are kind of these are smooth curves, which we're good at smooth curves. It's fine. One of the so this I don't think is actually terribly bad, but one actual difficulty is we're now when we look at this and this, they are unaligned. They have to be unaligned, which is actually problematic. They don't actually have to be. You can actually put in extra space to actually so to line them all up, uh, so that, that each part each part starts at the same same height. Okay, so we could actually have the, this red thing here and this red thing. This one moves up and we could do that. If they were unaligned though, would visually the, not, the two lines wouldn't look like 100% of the same thing. So we got a problem there. And also if we did align them, I would break this plot so badly because they flip. This guy is lower here, <laughs> which would be terrible. So you can't really fix this problem. <laughs> okay, so they are, it is kind of, again, it's, a, it's an alignment problem. Okay. And uh, very quickly, just to talk about color. Okay, it's really, really hard. <laughs> okay, and so how do you specify color to a computer software system in R, you know, Python? Okay, so uh, some hex, which uh, so it's a hexadecimal uh, uh, phrase, if you will, which is actually made up typically of uh, sharp sign and then six six characters between zero and nine and A through F, which is the hexadecimal thing, and they actually represent red green and blue components. That's not how the human uh, kind of perception system thinks. We do not, we can't work in RGB. This is purely a device for television. Okay? But these old, you know, the cathode, cathode ray tubes, and so, you know, you actually have these three things. You can get any color you kind of want to some extent, but you can't actually specify the um, human, the, the human, what the human uh, cognition system actually picks up, so it's a very bad system to work in. Uh, it's, when we use when we use rainbow colored things like that, it's highly nonlinear. What we actually pick up, a change here and a change here are radically different. Okay, so we, there's a bunch of things that can go wrong. So people have actually created very different, numerous, numerous, numerous uh, 
different um, uh, color schemes. This is the one everyone knows and hates, okay? Uh, uh, everyone's familiar with it, so we may do, okay? But then there's these uh, hue, luminance, and saturation, which are the three components in the actual eye. That's, that these are the important things. But then we have, but even that, this this system doesn't actually work because we actually end up with a, it doesn't get the luminance correct correctly as we actually perceive it properly, okay? So we have these hue, saturation, and value, and so on. And then this lab thing is, is particularly good, but it's somewhat complicated. This is actually the color. This is actually the color space. It's a three-dimensional color space. This is hue. This is your color wheel. And as you change the saturation, as you add more white. They, you, you, you decrease the saturation of the color, so then we go out and, and get stuff on the side and saturate. This is high saturation going inwards, it, more adding more white, and then this is actually a, a black and white level, and that's what's giving us our edge detection. Um, so um, there's three types of, of palettes that you actually want. How many of you know, how many of you have used Color Brewer? Okay, not enough because everyone should be using something like Color Brewer or Colorizer.org or something like that. Okay, um, just, so there's basically three things. If you want to show categorical data, you just use Hue. Okay, you leave out the luminance and you leave out the saturation. You can pick the right level of each of those, but you do. the comparison is the Hue, the actual red, blue, yellow, green, okay? Or, you know, some, somewhat primary colors. Okay, but other, otherwise we have these, these things where we have sequential uh, ranges, which just goes from a minimum to a maximum, and then we have the other one where we actually saw on mean arts plot, with the second one where we actually went from blue to red with the white in the middle, which where you actually want to focus on the bit in the middle, and that's called a diverging range. And then basically uh, off you go and um, pick these things. This is Cindy Brewer's web page that actually allows you to do stuff, and it has some really nice things. Which uh, you basically say, how many colors do I want? <laughs> okay. Is it one of these three types? What am I trying to actually convey? Okay, and then you are able to pick these different things. And then you also allow to say, hey, is it colorblind safe? Is it printer friendly? And does it is it photocopy safe? And, and, and so forth, and you can change the transparency. You can also get different and get the answers back in different forms. You can then just feed straight in. This is also built into several pieces of software where you just say, give me this palette or whatever it is, but this is a nice interactive thing. And you sort of actually able to, you're also able to sort of contrast with putting roads and terrain and certain things up so you can actually see the background uh, and see other, how well it, it actually identifies the points that you want to stand out. We have to use heavily saturated colors, and for the shading, we use less. Um, I'm going to throw these notes up. As I say, the best thing to do is read tomorrow's book, uh, or Ware's book, or all of the books. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, but, uh, but I put in some of the rules of thumb about how many bins you should use based on a lot of their experience and stuff like that. There's only so much you can do, and we always seem to go past the point that we use. And I'm, a, I'm just the greatest offender in this. I'm just putting you know, 12 million colors in it, and nobody can actually pick up the difference. Um, so uh, the um, so there's a, there are some really good things to actually uh, to, to think about. Uh, so this is, do you know about this? How many of you have used this, any of these, of actually checking for color blindness? It's a really good thing. It's cheap and easy, okay? There's web, there are websites, there's, it's in, built into R and other pieces too. You can just say, hey, Take these colors and map them into the colors that uh, a color black person would see, and you get to see what they would see. And if it doesn't show you, if you can't see the bit that you want, then no, neither can anybody else who's color black. This is uh, this is uh, Maureen Stone stuff. This is a, look, you can, this is better. I think most people would like this plot better, but this is a um, this is getting it right in black and white first, and then adding colors just as as a, an extra bit. By the way, is this red the same as this red? It is. Yeah. There's black lines on the side of the, of, of the curve. Apparently, apparently, this is a really clever trick that they used to use when it was expensive, when they couldn't get different colors. They used to have to use different plates. So they actually did this thing. But they, they, there's a whole lot of little things going on here. Right? But this is what I was talking about with the actual choice of colors here. The blue here get, is, is, you know, is, signifies the, the ocean or the bay, the, the land, and so forth. Uh, and pick up. And there's this, there's this notion, see, the, see the, the text here? The text is actually also uh, in the same color, but the luminance has changed because we wouldn't be able to see it otherwise. Obviously, it could just fade into the background 
it was the same thing. But there's we, we people actually know how much luminance you need to contrast different things. Um, so and then so this, this is this, this. Hopefully you're all using conditional plots. Okay, these panel plots because there's no other way to actually look at massive amounts of data without just seeing everything. Um, have you seen these before? Yeah. Yes. These. Are, Okay, so 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 this <laughs> so these are these, so these are cartograms. Okay, and they're very they're I mean, so this these adjust for population density. Okay, or, or other characteristics where you're not just looking at you know because as we look at these things, you go like wow, this is this you know this gives us a different uh, a different picture. Okay, uh, and so forth. So it's. Um, uh, we have to adjust, and there's there's clever ways to do it. But you prefer this or this? <laughs> one before. Yeah. That one. The other one's really. <laughs> it, it, it depends. Looks like a heart or something. It, it, depends. <laughs> it depends. It depends a lot. It, it depends on this one. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I mean, so so there are there are. I mean, again, it, you have to figure out what the right message is. You've got two different types of contents. You got to figure out. Are we pulling out the right the, the right things? Um, they're all they're all gross distortions, okay? And there's so much more we could talk about um, in terms of visualization. We won't unless people want to. What we can find, happy to love to chat. Um, you know, one thing we didn't talk about, which is the really fun part, is what we could go we could go on for color for years, but um, constant of time. What's the one thing we didn't talk about that's that's becoming much more important these days? Interactive. Interactive and animated and animation. Interaction and animation, which of course we can now do beautifully. And I, it's fabulous. And I, I wish, I hope way more people actually start creating interesting plots. And there's a whole lot of perception concepts there too, but they, so they build on these ones. But yeah, it's a whole other area. Tomorrow's book um, does actually talk about some of these aspects. And it, it's very interesting. But of course, if you're trying to talk about uh, the co uh, cognition, of moving things, it really does. You do need to understand what's happening here first. You know, you need to actually get a lot of these down. And um, as I mentioned, when you um, when you uh, this is the one plot that, in my mind, that I, will, I want you to remember, you know, and, and strive to actually try to get here. Okay, to actually be on these guys, maybe with unaligned if you need to, and try to stay away from these. And as a result, dot charts are your friend. <laughs> okay, and bar plots and, and pie charts are something we should try to stand out. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any comments, questions, comments? Yes. Um, can you go back to the mutants, Chuck? I hope so. <laughs> it depends where it is in the. Uh, I have to, I'm, I'm not going to go through that big heavy plot. But um, I have a question about the, uh, the scale of the. Oh, After all that work. <laughs> where to go? Hello, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What is the issue with the scale? And so there's a there's a. So it's yeah. So this one here. Yeah. So with that scale, it's easy to find out the measles uh, frequency distribution before vaccine was introduced. But after vaccine was introduced, kind of become all blue. So yeah. how do you? And that's kind of what they were going for. Uh, I mean, they're, 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 they're basically trying to say, look, it's, it's all very, very low. Okay. And that, now you, you know, you, you, I, I suspect every one of you have heard the phrase of how to lie with statistics and, and how to lie with plots and stuff. You know, you can choose these scales. Uh, uh, in in the notes, in my notes on color, sort of bonus, I'll pop up. You can actually, you you can pick these scales very carefully so that there are linear changes. So that you know, when we we see a, a, a change from here to here is the same as the perceptual change from here to here. Um, I don't think this one is probably doing that. Okay, so this is where you really do want to actually pick out the appropriate color scale to convey the, the, the important issues. Okay, and you can you can lie. You can be, so we pick up different wavelengths uh, we, you know, uh, differently. We have different acuity of, of these different things, and as a result, we get these nonlinear scales. This is why you, I would do something like color brewer, color brewer to actually pick these out. Um, there's a bunch of rules for actually trying to 
uh, or your guidelines for actually how, how you do this. But um, you're, yeah, uh, in this case, they are trying to actually say, yeah, look, it all goes away. <laughs> you know, vaccines are good. Um, uh, but yeah. Okay. 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 So it's just there's only two, there's a binary, a binary step. Unless you want to say, oh, well, I'll, I'll let you see that, that there's, there's three different levels before you hit the threshold and down. But, it, but again, so this again, what, what, what's your message? I mean, which is, this is why we have to think carefully. What do we want to convey to people? But if we want to sort of say, if we want to allow people to compare this guy here to, uh, to this guy down here and to actually have some meaningful thing, well, then we should ideally strive to get that linear perception where you know where and again this is this is color so it's three-dimensional okay so we have to try to figure out and we want to get it onto essentially one dimension which is the perception of you know how much of a change so we, we would like to be able to say that the change between this guy and this guy is the same as the change between this guy and this guy let's say if they are actually the same number of units away from here and it's like it's hard but it can be done but if you're trying to read off if you're trying to give people the actual intensity values the levels corresponding to these numbers then we have to get the scale right, because you, you know none of you would have to be, would accept uh, a, um, a, a non-linear scale on a straight line. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> no problem here. No, no problem. Not even think about it. <laughs> so it, it, it's a really hard problem. There are there are some there are some solutions to this. Okay. This is why people um, a lot of scales, a lot of these scales, these color maps use the rainbow color. Okay, and that is demonstrably non-linear. Okay, and you go like, please don't use that. So that now anything, and then there are better, better ones. But it's, it's, I, to me, color is just really hard. Is there a data visualization class that we can do? <laughs> you know, um, uh, I, you know, I, I, when I was reading this book, there's new, there's, there's such important stuff, and uh, there's so much of it. Uh, and it's really hard, especially when you go into actually how do we create the plots, like the actual techniques, the software, the, 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 the computational model, and then you get into animation. And um, uh, so I, I am actually thinking about that. Uh, uh, we need one. I have a funny suspicion. Uh, there's something in the back of my mind that uh, Quan Lu Ma in the computer science department actually teaches something uh, along uh, along the lines that would be very useful. Okay, so um, his, his name is. Uh, his name is K W A N Lu, and she is a one of the in legacy probably the most uh, recognized uh, researcher in visualization. Uh, he used to do an awful lot of um, scientific visualization, and in, in the last three or four or five years, he's done a lot. He's moving a lot towards data visualization. So I, mean, I think he teaches a class, which may, I'm not sure what level it's, it, it's at, I feel like he can maybe for his grad students that he in his lab, <laughs> but that's a, that's a good one. Otherwise, if you if anyone can find one, please let me know, myself and Pamela, and if you can't find one, please let us know, because <laughs> we need one. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a very important area. Um, so it's kind of like the way um, computing is taught, it's like, yeah, it's easy, pick it up on your own. And it's like, hey, there's a lot of stuff here, and a lot of, a lot of um, an enormous amount of experience that is in these books, which just is way too much to read. Any other thoughts? No? Everyone? Everyone? You got, you got a final one? Yeah? Uh, so one more, I have a, uh, I'm facing a problem just similar to this. So I'm trying to lock in two maps of different values. I'm sorry to get confused. Um, before you guys head out, there's a sign-in sheet. If you could uh, make sure you sign that for you. Yeah. It's, it's right there. So, so, so technically, it's a sign on the sheet. Sign on the sheet, yeah. We can't <laughs> see. <leave. laughs> so there are two values, which are uh, two related values. One is high, one is low. So and these are two maps. So I'm trying to show that one is higher than the other. At the same time, I'm trying to show the geographical distribution of these two values. So how do I uh, select the color scale? Do I select it for the higher value, or do I? If I select it for the higher value, like the lower value is washed out. And by second for the lower value, the higher value becomes. If you have you got two two maps side by side? Yeah. Okay. So 
Um, so that's a huge amount of information for people going backwards and forwards. Uh, my immediate my immediate thought there, which could be, you know, I'm going to give you an answer. I'm not saying it's a good answer. But what about taking the difference between the two? Are they on the same? Are they on the same units that you can actually take a difference? And then I you want actually to just have. Hmm? I want to show that different maps. I want to show that. Yes. The maps different maps. Actually, there are three maps. <laughs> yeah, they're just multiplying now, and that next to be a fourth map. Um, it's really hard. I mean, just think of it again. I mean, we, it, you can do it, uh, but just and and again, I have. If there's a lot of data there, that your job is not to make it easy to, for people to see, just as easy as 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 as, as can be done. Um, but that is a huge amount of information, depending on how big the maps are and what what resolution you're looking at the actual cells or the colors. And um, so it can be really difficult. Um, so you've got to, okay, I'm going to, we'll, have, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> okay, I, mean, I, I think I want to sit down and think about this. It's, it's a fun problem, but coming up with the right, um, coming up with the right uh, scale for that is, is, is tricky. So what you're really trying to do is actually use some, use some guiding principles and then do a lot of experimentation to see can you, you know, how well you do, and then somebody else in the, in the lab, you know, go, and ask, go ask Ben and say, hey, can, what do you, you know, how big is that difference? How big is that difference? Is it twice as big as the other? And you know, you you you're there's very it's very hard to actually just come up with it. There's a simple solution to this stuff. But there are some guiding principles that are in some of the notes on, on color, and then a lot of experimentation. Okay, depending on the context, that's a, that's part of the issue. Going back to what you were talking about, you know, if these things are very small, if, you're, if the area that you're coloring in is very small, and you need to be able to see differences across you know small small distances. Yeah, um, you need heavily saturated colors to do that. Whereas if you have, if you're trying to find differences between big areas, then that gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of actually the the defining of scale. So if you go back to that, that that cone that I showed you about the hue, saturation, and luminance, uh, or brightness, should I say, um, if if you have to stay on the top, on the on the on the, on the ring, and you can't use anything in the, top, in the center of the circle or down below, you're you've got very few colors. Uh, whereas if you have that whole space to work with, that can be good. And that depends on how big the areas you are actually trying to discriminate are. Yeah. Thanks.